a new tomb in Egypt. Hmm. I love to read about history. It consistently proves to me that people don't change, you know? They really don't. I love to watch these little articles, too. I remember I saw a little article in the paper about this tomb in Egypt, as a matter of fact. They found it, and they opened it, and inside this tomb, they found these, these three mummies, which is nothing new about that, but one mummy, out of all the mummies they've ever found, for some inexplicable reason, had this palm frond. Now, you know a palm frond, like a stem of a palm tree with a, uh, a leaf on it. This palm frond, I don't know why, but it was inserted at the base of his spine. <laughs> they couldn't figure out why. They thought, what is that? Well, I thought about that for a long time. It really bothered me. And then I finally figured out, well, that was probably the one guy that the government wanted to make an example of. You know? <laughs> the one guy that tried to fight the city hall. Probably the day the tax collector came around and woke him up from a nap. Yeah? Hi, I'm from the Pharaoh's office, and I've come to collect some taxes. Huh? Well, yeah, you were here last month, remember? I already paid you. Oh, I know, but this is a special tax that we have to collect that the Pharaoh's put on. A special tax? Oh, no. Don't tell me they're going to build another one of them pointy-ass buildings in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> no, no, it's nothing like that. It's, um, well, we have to replace an entire army. What? Are we at war? I didn't... No. No, it's nothing like that. It's, uh... Well, we lost an army at sea. <laughs> Wait a minute. H how do you lose an army at sea? Well, I was afraid you are going to ask that, but, um... You see, the army was chasing some Israelites across the desert. <laughs> the Israelites came to the Red Sea, and for some unknown reason, the Red Sea parted. And the Israelites ran across, and the army followed, and the sea closed up, and, uh... The army was lost. <laughs> what the hell are you people smoking up there in Thebes? <laughs> and tell me something. What was the army doing chasing Israelites? Why don't you come down here and chase the goddamn locusts off my land? <laughs> I, mem I never once looked out my window and saw Israelites eating my grain. But a couple of months ago, 10 billion locusts dropped out of the sky. We had locusts up the kazoo. <laughs> eating everything that wasn't nailed down. Where was the army then? Chasing Israelites. Well, I don't know anything about that. I just come down to collect some taxes, that's all. Now, you owe us either one goat, or in lieu of that, six bushels of wheat, or 15 pieces of gold. Hey, you were here last month. I had two goats, you took one, left me the goat that's dry. I got two kids, one in the chute and a dry goat. I got four bushels of wheat to last me the whole winter, thanks to them damn locusts, and I got six pieces of gold in my name. And you want to take it? Well, I don't want to take it, but the pharaoh said, hey, screw the pharaoh. <laughs> I beg your pardon? I said, screw the pharaoh. What do you want me to do, draw you a picture? <laughs> no, I majored in hieroglyphics. I think I can handle that. <laughs> Well, he's not gonna be real happy about this. Hey, don't talk to me about happy. Not when the Pharaoh lives in splendor up there in Thebes and I live in his mud hut trying to scratch a living out of this scrawny land and you talk to me about happy? I don't wanna hear about it. And you people have bled me long enough. I ain't gonna pay no more. And you can tell the Pharaoh that. You can go back to Thebes and you tell the Pharaoh the day I pay him another tax, that's the day they bury me with a palm frond stuck up my ass! <laughs> and the next day, everybody paid. Because <laughs> he said, did you see what happened to Abdul? Yeah. I watched him bury him. They never could close his eyes. <laughs> So it doesn't change, you know? Technology changes, right? Surroundings change, but humans, everything remains the same. Love, death, taxes, money, sex. All the constants. Been going on for centuries, thousands of years. 
I'm sure that some guy thousands of years ago went through his mail and probably got the same sinking feeling that I get when I open a letter from the bank saying that I'm overdrawn. Ugh. Oh, I hate to be overdrawn. Worst thing about that is that, well, your checks are gonna bounce. Now, the worst things about having your checks bounce is that that frantic running around all over town, just trying to warn the victims that they're not as well off as they thought they were. Oh, boy. It's like facing a jealous husband, you know? You never know how they're gonna react. <coughs> Mr. Beaton, how are you? Mr. Beaton, um, I don't really quite know how to tell you this, but, um... What's the matter? You don't like the suit? Oh, it looks great. Just turn around. Oh, it's perfect. It fits you like a second skin. No, the suit's fine, Mr. Beaton. The suit's great. It's just, uh, you, you remember the, uh, the check that I gave you for yes. the... Yes. What's the matter with it? Well, it was kind of written uh, just a little ahead of its time. And you mean it's going to bounce? Well, just a little, but it's going to be fine. Oh, Mr. Beaton, no, oh, Mr. Beaton, Mr. Beaton! Uh, Mr. Beaton? Is my uh, blazer ready? Taxi! I thought the easiest to tell would be a doctor, because after all, I mean, what can he do? Put oh, back your appendix? Hurt. Untransplant your heart? Reinstate your hernia? So I felt confident. Yes, well, I don't think that rib will give you any more trouble. Oh, okay. Just don't do it under the shower anymore. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, how is the girl? She's fine. She's fine. Can't wait to get the plaster cast off her jaw. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, uh, by the way, Doctor, remember the last bill that I paid? Yes? Well, the, uh, the check is, um... The check is what? Well, it's, uh, uh sick. <laughs> sick. Sick. Yeah, uh, very sick. But it's gonna get better, I, I promise. I pro... <laughs> Then he had the gall to charge me an additional fee for hair removal. <laughs> and never bounce a check on your butcher. Could you turn the heat up a little? <laughs> How are you? Of course, this is nothing to what they did to check bouncers hundreds of years ago. Then they were hurled into a dank, sweaty dungeon and subjected to unspeakable torture. They have the same sort of dungeons today. Except we call them health clubs. Jim's Jim, if your flabby body is unbecoming to you, it should be coming to us. Hi, I'm Sharon. Yes, we do have classes for women. Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturday mornings. No, sir, you can't watch. <laughs> Okay, Kelly, if you like what you see, we'll sign you up for a course. I'll sign, I'll sign. <laughs> no. uh, 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 Mr. Denton, no cheating. Right, let's get you warmed up, Kelly. Let's get you on the bike. Get okay. those uh, Carl's party and the old gluteus right. worked out. So, uh, you want to shape up, do you? Yeah, I just want to firm up a little, you know? No, I know. You want to... Bump up those pecs! Yeah, kind of trim my triceps. Beef up those biceps. I'd like to lengthen my latimus dorsi. <laughs> I'm sorry we don't do surgery. <laughs> Who sent you in? Your wife? No, no, I'm separated. Oh, separated. Get a lot of your kind here. Yeah? Get a lot of the other kind, too. <laughs> well, uh, let me know when they're in the sauna, all right? <laughs> sure. Right, then. Let's get to work on those, uh... Deflated deltoids. Okay. You know, it's a funny thing. When a man spits up with his old lady, first thing he does, goes out, buys himself a whole load of new clothes yeah. for somebody ten years younger, gets himself a new hairstyle, <coughs> and uh, come to a gym to get himself a new body. Ah, well, uh... <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll take that one. <laughs> That's Sharon. Yeah? One of our great success stories. Yeah? Used to have an 18-inch chest. Came in one day, picked up a chest expander, and uh, she's never looked back. Well, if I had that in front of me, I sure as hell wouldn't look back either. 
is she, an instructor? No, she's an incentive. <laughs> Makes sense. A healthy body means a healthy mind. You really believe that? Yeah, of course I do. I don't know, I just find it hard to believe that before he discovered E equals MC squared, Einstein weightlifted 1,200 pounds, you know? But then again, maybe that's what made his eyes so poppy. Exercise! Unpollute your mind! Great for getting rid of all that. Aggression. Uh, how do you figure that? Well, say your boss came in, yeah. tore you off a strip, made you feel smaller than a eunuch's prospects. How would you handle that? Well, I'd uh, do like every man does. I'd go home, take it out of my wife. But now you don't have a wife. Now what'd you do? Well, I'd scream at other drivers. That's where we can help. Hate your boss? Mm -hmm. Take that, you sniveling fat slob. You call me? <laughs> yeah. Not you, Mr. Denton. Mad at your wife? Ooh. Sorry. <laughs> you don't have a wife. Ah, but my wife's got a lawyer. <laughs> and then there's, uh, and, uh, and of course, don't forget. Who are they? Critics. <laughs> now you got it. Yeah? Go on, get rid of some more of that. Aggression. Yeah. The bank's computer. <laughs> hey, this works. Maybe I finally found a way of releasing my anger, huh? The Inland Revenue. Because <laughs> you got to get it out. You can't hold that anger in, boy. I mean, you hold that anger in, it's going to turn on you. It's going to bubble in you, and you end up mumbling. You know those street mumblers? You ever see those guys mumbling on the street? Standing on the corner, and all of a sudden, son of a bitch! <laughs> hey, sorry to hear about that, poor guy. <laughs> Happens to everybody if you don't let it out. You gotta learn how to deal with that anger when you feel it, you know? Of course, there's some situations I realize when you can't. Like if some guy's holding me up with a gun. I might be angry as hell with him, but I ain't gonna tell him. <laughs> when a cop gives me a ticket, what am I gonna say? Take this ticket and shove it up your nostril. <laughs> Same with a beautiful woman, you know? Unless I'm married to her, I find it very difficult to be angry with a beautiful woman. Yes, sir. Don't you yes, sir, me. Look what you did to my pants. What's the matter? What's the matter? Look at the crease. There's no, <laughs> There's no crease. Not there. I'm talking about here. Look. <laughs> Since when the creases go down the side, huh? <laughs> you got a Chinese presser back there? <laughs> we are not responsible for anything that happens to your clothes during cleaning. What are you talking? Look at these pockets, man, look. These belong on a billiard table. What do you expect me to do about it? Just bring the manager out here. I'll deal with him. I'll straighten it out, all right? All right, if that's what you want. Yeah. Leslie? Yeah, get Leslie out here. He's got one angry customer to deal with. Oh, I can't believe it, man. My lucky pants. Rune. Rune? Yes, can I help you? Yeah, look. Get the creases on these pants. <laughs> oh, but they're lovely. They are? Oh, yes, turn around. Oh, and you fill them so well. <laughs> you really show off your best feature. Yeah? Oh, and I love those side creases. You do? I think side creases on a man are so sexy. Sexy? Oh, yeah. Now, what did you want to see me about? Herman said you were quite furious. Oh, no. <laughs> I wasn't furious. You know, I was just a little, a uh, little upset. Why? Know. Well, these were my, uh, my lucky pants. Your what? My lucky pants. <laughs> see, every time I wore them, I, uh, <clears throat> got lucky. <laughs> <laughs> lucky? Yeah. You mean with girls? Uh, Preferably. <laughs> and I'm, I'm just not used to creases on the side, that's all. <laughs> Last night, a, a pickpocket went for me, and it wasn't my pocket that he tried to... Pick. That's a mistake anybody can make. They could. <clears throat> could. Are you still angry? Uh, oh, who, me? Oh, <laughs> No, of course not. Good. Yeah. Because I s hate sending a customer away angry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and if there's anything else we can do for you, yeah. just let us know. Oh. Well, Bye. Okay. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> oh, thank you. 
<laughs> yes. Uh, uh, thanks. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> I stood there like a kid and let her sweet talk me right out of my lucky pants, man. I should have stood up to her like a man and then let her talk me out of my lucky pants. <laughs> Boy, I should have known something was gonna happen, something disastrous. It always does at dry cleaners. Me and dry cleaners, I don't know, it just always happens. For instance, I can never pick the right day to collect my clothes. <laughs> I mean, it never fails. No matter how beautiful the day is when I go in, you can rest assured that as soon as I pick up my cleaning, Hurricane Hilda will strike. Hey, Roy, how are you? Hello. Fine, thank here. you. Already? Hmm. Somebody's getting married, huh? Yes, I'm afraid so. They're barking mm. the dust. Oh, yes, the pain. <laughs> beautiful you. day, though, isn't it? Marvelous. <laughs> yes. some gray hairs there. People love to point those out. Oh, getting some gray. <laughs> I don't mind a gray hair in my head. It's a gray hairs in other strategic areas that I can't handle. <laughs> what if you got gray hair in your head? People say they got little sayings, you know? Well, just because there's snow on the roof doesn't mean there's no fire in the furnace. <laughs> what if you got snow around the furnace door? <laughs> that gives the impression there's not enough fire in there to melt the damn snow. <laughs> I don't know why I'm worried. I don't know. It seems to be such a fascination with hair. Every time I turn on TV, I see these models that are washing it and combing it and stroking it and tossing it. It's the more hair, the more pampering. It seems to be an obsession. I see it all the time when I turn on TV on these commercials. <coughs> this cream rinse will make your hair so shiny, so natural, so easy to manage. Oh, it does. It does. I can feel it. It's so silky and so smooth. It gives your hair such body and such life. Oh, yes, body and life. I just love my hair. It feels so full. And the Cream Rinse Shampoo for a really full head of hair. Carl's, for that all-round hair beauty that everyone will be talking about. <laughs> See, hair is one of those things that you can't resist touching, especially a loose one. I mean, when you see it, man, you gotta pick it up, no matter what the circumstances. France will be forever in your debt. and images. I doubt if certain historical figures would have had the same impact had their hair been different. You see, that's why barbers are so omnipotent. They have the power to alter your appearance. And not just your hair. Ah! 
Mr. Van Gogh, so good to see you. It's been a long, long time. Come in, come in, come in. Ah, yes, how are you? Everything all right? I'll give you a haircut. Must take off your hat, though. Ha, ha, ha. Ah, so, you like, uh, so usual razor cut, Monsieur Van Gogh? Ah, very good, very good. So tell me, how's the painting? Have you finished the ceiling yet? <laughs> <laughs> Just a little post impressionist humor, man. Yes, sir, so tell me, have you sold the painting? No, not yet. Oh, you. That's enough to make a man blow his brains out. Ah, but not you, monsieur, not you, no, no. Tell me, monsieur Van Gogh, uh, are you still stretching the canvas with the same little woman? <laughs> that one, she is so mm, beautiful. So she takes a few cash customers on the weekend, huh? <laughs> what is that? A loss for life, no? <laughs> okay, monsieur. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I am sorry. I'm sorry. I, I mean, uh, I am so sorry. <laughs> it was. Uh, it's just a little nick. It's nothing. It's nothing at all, Monsieur. Oh, Monsieur Van Gogh. Uh, what? Uh, what? Uh, uh, Monsieur Van Gogh. Uh, <clears throat> uh, you do not wear glasses, do you, Monsieur? Van Gogh? <laughs> Good, 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 good. That's here. Put this, uh, put this back on. Oops. But, uh, maybe if I put it to the inside, he could hear himself better. No? <laughs> oh, what, my Monsieur Van Gogh? Ah, just calm down, calm down. So, is everything all right? I'm so good. Ah, little glue, little glue. Yes, sir. Oh, I have a better idea. He put it in a box. Put it in a box. He could give it to his beautiful girl. Yes, Monsieur Van Gogh, huh? What better gift to someone you love than something of yourself, no? Yes, no, please, be my guest. No, 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 no. <laughs> Don't bother about paying, monsieur. This one is on me. It's certainly not on you. <laughs> au revoir, monsieur, au revoir. My love to Theo. You? What could I do? I mean, yeah, true. I just, uh, phew. I don't know my thought. I don't know. Ah, Monsieur Le Trac! Monsieur Le Trac, come right in here. Come, 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 come. I'll give you a short clip. <laughs> of course, now, they're not, uh, they're not barbers anymore. No, they're stylists, you see. They've made a haircutting branch of show business. They're outrageous, they're temperamental, egotistical. They listen to nobody's opinion but their own. In fact, a simple thing like going to get a haircut has become a major production in which they're the stars and we're merely the uh, supporting players. <laughs> what a waste. What terrible, terrible waste. <laughs> What's the big deal about hair as long as you got your health? Health? Have you ever met a woman who wanted to run a finger through your health? <laughs> Give me typhoid, give me scarlet fever, give me the bubonic plague, anything as long as it comes with hair. <laughs> Mr. Brennan, your wig will be ready in a minute. George is just teasing your ends. <laughs> By the way, what were you doing in that wig? Gerald can't work out how on earth you managed to get whipped cream in the party. <laughs> if you'd like to go through. Mm. Mr. Monteith? Yeah? Mr. Ploppadopoulos will see you now. Oh, all right. Thank you. Mr. Plopadopoulos, it's hair time. <laughs> Plopadopoulos is red. What have we here? Ah, ruptured follicles. <laughs> Shampoo burn. Hair long and limp. It must be Monteith. Ah, Mr. Plopadopoulos, how are you? Plopodopoulos. Oh, that's what I said. No, no. You put the plod where you should put the plop, plop, plopadopoulos. 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 Got it. Prepare him. Okay. Ich. Mm. Ich. Ich. Champagne. No, coffee be fine. Thank you. <laughs> Not for you, for me. Hmm? It make my scissors sing and my clippers plop. I mean, the plop. <laughs> No. Oh. 
Klopodopoulos is ready. Scissors. Comb. <laughs> Clamps. <laughs> yeah, look at this. Yeah, perfect. I've seen more life in an undertaker's workroom. Look. <laughs> yeah. Who cuts this? You do. <laughs> it looks nice. <laughs> well, Miss Plopidopoulos, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. The, uh, the last time you cut... The last time you cut my hair, it was, uh, it was, uh, it was, uh, it was too short. What? Well, all I said it was too short. Huh. I'm going to pretend I don't hear that. Or would you say to Michelangelo to call his statue David Eric? <laughs> when you come to Plopidopoulos, you don't come to no clip joint. You come to artist studio. Well, all I said was it's too short. Oh, it looks silly long. You've got fine, little, little, itty, bitty hairs, huh? <laughs> if I don't cut your hair, look, like short, it flip up in back and look like head peeling or like a, like a Coke bottle with a straw sticking out. <laughs> but look, if it's too short, I feel like everybody's laughing at me every time I walk down the street. If they laugh, they don't laugh at haircut, but at your face. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody laughs at haircut of Pericles Plopodopoulos. You know why? Because I'm artist. I cut hair to fit kind of person. And now I'm going to do the impossible. I'm going to cut your hair to fit the kind of stinking person I know you are. Handcuffs. Razor. As I found out, if you don't deal with your anger at the time, you end up with bad pants, a lousy haircut, and your neck in a brace, and mumbling on a street corner. <laughs>